So, I want to encourage you to embrace the imperfections in your crochet work. Let go of perfectionism and just enjoy making what you're making. So, hello, my name is Fiona and I am your crochet mentor and leader of the Stitch Mom Crochet Club. This is episode two of my crochet and chat mentor series where I literally just crochet and I chat to you about topics that will help you get more joy from your crochet and help you find some more inner peace. So in this episode where I'm covering perfectionism, this one is definitely for you if you are always worried if your crochet is good enough or if you stress over messing up your stitches or if you worry if anyone will like what you're making. It is not for you if you're not interested in letting go of the perfect, you're not interested in finding more time and joy from your crochet. So today we're going to cover or we're going to talk about letting go of perfectionism and we're going to talk about this because I want you to learn to embrace the imperfections in your work so that you can actually enjoy the process of what you're making because that I think is where the true beauty of crochet is is not always in what you're making that's the great outcome but it is the calm and the stress release that it brings for you I have to say that one of the reasons that I actually prefer crochet over the other crafts I've tried is because it is so much easier to hide and blend in your mistakes. I knitted when I was a teen. I sew uh, very irregularly with my sewing. But one thing I learned very quickly, knitting, you can't hide the stitches. When you drop a stitch, it's very obvious. Crochet, depending on the project, it can be or can be a little bit obvious but it depends on the person and what project it is but I can assure you that one two three four five just about everything that I have made has a mistake in it somewhere and I've left it there are some that yes I have gone back and fixed them but for the majority there is a mistake somewhere and I'm going to and the reason I leave them is that most people aren't even going to notice the mistake they are there and if someone does notice it and can't live with it then but honestly that's their issue that's not your issue and I find that when you start stressing over the mistakes that you're making it takes away the joy how fun is it to find a mistake 10 rows back and think that you've got to frog it back to that to fix it when you've done all this work and all this time making it just to find a little mistake now there are some mistakes that I will fix and here's what I do when I come across them and how I will assess them so well the first one is that I assess the mistake I look at it and think how obvious is it and let me say that if you find it 10 20 rows back I don't think you could class it as a really obvious mistake because you've gone all this way already without seeing it. And I also look at how much it's going to impact the rest of my work. So if it's going to impact the stitch count and you can't amend the stitch count to get it back, then I would consider frogging it back. And if it's one that you know, is very very obvious that you can't even repair then potentially as well or it depends where it's located as well so I'd look at so how far back it is if it's like the row before like the end of the row before and it's a short row then yeah I will potentially go back and sort it out for me if I'm designing something that I know I need to take images of I will probably go back and sort it out if I think it's going to impact the final image if I don't think it will then I will leave it there um, I also look at how easy it is to fix so is it something that I can fix by doing some increases or doing some decreases is it one that 
only obvious if you're an axia crocheter and can see what the pattern is because I can pretty much guarantee that for a lot of the mistakes if you're not a crocheter you don't know what you're looking at it's just like one big blob of color or some flowers or whatever it is that you're crocheting you're not going to see the individual stitch like you will and can you mend it so is there something you can do to go back and just add a little stitch or I don't know, there's different ways that you can fix them. Tension. Now, if your tension's inconsistent, then I just go with it because it's going to be inconsistent through the whole work and it is something that you can, you, you get better over time. So, yeah, it might not be perfect this time round, but the next time round it might be a little bit closer to perfect. And also decide how you feel about it. So some of it can be dependent on who it's going to. If you're selling it, then maybe you want to have fewer imperfections. And if you are making a lot of mistakes, then consider why you're making them and maybe it's not the project that is the best use of your time and find something that is. Is it on the front? Is it on the back? Is it something you can live with? Um, I know that I've got... A, a poncho that has a very obvious mistake. I'd already gone back and frogged it. It was one I was designing for the clubhouse. So I'd already gone back and the rounds were getting bigger and bigger and I was just over it by then and just accepted it. And now when I put it on, I make sure that that part is at the back so I can't see it. I could repair it. I just haven't got around to that. I've also had my, so my first Forever Eileen. So that's a granny, a uh, granny. A blanket I made in honor of my granny and for that one I was kept losing stitches off the end which I know is a common mistake is dropping stitches because that last one especially if it's single crochet in rows that last little one is really hard to find and easy to miss if you're not paying attention I didn't go back I've left them all in there and I just added more back in at the end. So each row I would add more stitches, like one or two more stitches until I was back up to the right stitch count. And by the time I added my border in, it was pretty much non-existent. I couldn't really tell. Because also consider what it's being used for because sometimes that is enough to make it hide as well. So I've got a macaroon whirl which is one that you needed to, it's got a drop stitch in it. So after like two or three rows, it then requires you to work a few rows together so that it pinches them and creates the macaroon. And there's at least two times in there where I had missed that stitch and realized on the next row. So I simply went back and I repaired it. I did not frog it. I just did not frog it. Um, I've definitely miscounted on numerous projects, so the stitch count's out. These squares, these hexagons, I can assure you there's mistakes in these where I've either missed a stitch and especially I generally don't find it until I'm joining them and then I just fudge it to make it so that it still attaches and looks like one piece. I'm making a queen cowl. That one I made... I don't know what I did. I went wrong on the stitch count at the end, so at one part it wasn't working for me. So I opted on that one to go back and unravel it because you could just unravel the ends because it's worked in one direction, so you can unravel the ends. I went back to fix it and I fixed it somewhat, but it's still, if I laid it out on the ground, you can still see the mistake. And, well, I'll accept it. Mismatched dye lots, that's another one that is common and I've done it because like I've made a blanket with all in white with squares. I didn't pay notice that they were different dye lots until I don't know, I had it lying out in the bright sun and noticed then or in brighter light and noticed then that it was different colours so my way to accommodate that was to just go with it and try to lay the squares out so that it was sort of mixed and matched random placement like you would with colours but I just did random placement of the squares that I had just to match them up that way and you can just 
work for men as being part of the process so it can be turned into stripes if you find out you've got different dye lots turn them into stripes it all works so some other things to remember when you're wanting to embrace some of those imperfections is remember that wonky sides can disappear when you add the border. They definitely can become less obvious. And as I said earlier, someone that doesn't crochet isn't necessarily going to notice the mistakes. They're just going to love what you've made them. And yeah, it might have some imperfections, but the majority of people are just going to love that you created something for them. And they're going to embrace those mistakes, especially if you help them celebrate the mistakes. You know, signs of love, it makes it unique, it's one of a kind if it's got its own mistake in it. See if you can increase or decrease at the sides or wherever you've got the extra stitches. I've definitely done that multiple times with many projects to fix things up because I really don't like to count. And as you're the person making the project, you're probably the only one that is going to notice. And I know when I posted the other day, there was Chantelle, who's a member of my Hooked on Crochet Club. She celebrated because she'd been leaving a project because she was concerned about the mistakes. Instead of just focusing on making it and enjoying that process, she was able to let that go and just embrace it. And even my first ripple blanket, that's another one. It's very uneven ripples, I can assure you. But it just gives character. It doesn't have to be perfect. So if nothing else you can get from this, I just want you to learn to embrace them and know that you won't always make mistakes. You will practice. You're never going to be perfect. You can if you're perfect then you're still you're lacking finding things to improve on. So always, always just embrace them. <laughs> Consider the process of making them instead of the final final product. But anyway, I hope this has been some use to you. I hope that you can learn to embrace the imperfections that your work might have. And I'm sure if I gave this blanket that I'm making to you, you'll find some mistakes. Even all of them. All of my temperature blankets have a mistake in them somewhere. And I make... and. I make these squares every single day, so I should know them, but you get into that state where you're just doing things without thinking or talking or you're crocheting and mistakes happen. So just embrace them. I'd love to know as well in the comments if what of this has resonated with you. Are you someone that struggles with imperfection? Is there something that you think you'd be able to embrace to be able to let go of that when you're next making something is do you have a project that you have set aside because you're frustrated with the mistakes are you going to be able to live with them and move on and accept them so and if you would like to take any action on what is if you need some help with imperfection if you want to improve on your confidence so that you feel more confident in leaving mistakes and making less mistakes then you can head to the Hooked on Crochet Club and join the waitlist um, because I do want you to enjoy it more. I want you to embrace it and focus on the actual joy from creating it. But anyway, I have rambled on. If you are watching the replay then please remember to save, share and like this post tag a friend, the more people that we can encourage to embrace the joys from crochet, the happier we're all going to be. And remember to follow so that you get every episode that comes up. And the next episode, did I write it down? I didn't write it down. So stay tuned and I'll share what the next episode is with you soon. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to attach the square and I will see you next month. Alrighty, I think I'm passing off. Say goodbye. <laughs>